For this session, we will now continue with the, the second part of your completing the audit, which is the addressing of your required disclosures. On our first part, we already discussed about the identification of possible unrecorded liabilities, that is the searching for unrecorded liabilities and performing other procedures, particularly to your litigations or claims. Now we are looking into your addressing required disclosures, your related parties, your going concern, your subsequent events, and lastly, your analytical review. So let's look now on the second item of your addressing required disclosure, that is your review of your going concern. So let's look into the review of your going concern. So the management res responsibility is that the management should assess the entity's ability to continue as going concern, making a judgment about the future outcome of, a cert of uncertain events or conditions for a period of one year from your balance sheet date. You already know the basic accounting concept of going concern or the going concern assumption that the entity in itself is viewed as continuing in business. But um, for, for audit purposes, the uh, period to determine whether the business will continue or not is a 12-month period. So in a going concern basis, generally, uh, the management will first look whether they are at a going concern or not. And based on the result of their assessment, to disclose. So what will the entity should uh, what will the entity disclose? So the entity will first assess going concern, okay? Upon assessment of going concern, you test whether it will disclose that they are really in going concern or now at a liquidation concern. Because um if ever they are now quitting the business, they should present their FS at liquidation concern but generally take note ah, going concern in the absence of any information going concern so the recording of any asset liabilities will be based on our pfr assess kasi going concern siya pero kung liquidating concern na siya you will not present it that way you will present it at its net realizable value so what is the auditor's responsibility as to this disclosure of going concerns? So our main uh, problem here is yung dinislose niya. Whether dinislose niya na going concern siya or liquidating concern siya. So these are your auditor. Uh, these are the following items, which is the responsibility of the auditor. First, overall evaluation of the appropriateness of management's use of going concern assumption in the preparation of the financial statements, whether their evaluation is proper, that they are still in going concern. Next, you need to identify material uncertainties about the entity's ability to continue as a going concern that need to be disclosed in the financial statements. So any uncertainty that could create a doubt that the entity could not now continue as going concern. Next, whether those events or uncertainties are disclosed. Now, if ever they are not disclosed, then we can now modify our audit report. And if conditions or events such as those identified previously create substantial doubt as to the ability of the entity to continue as a going concern, the auditor should consider whether management has feasible plans. So, uh, normally, when we talk about feasible plans, this is now the mitigation of the management that if ever, hindi nga sila going concern, ano ang pwede niyang gawin para mag-continue sila as going concern. So, ano din ang mga audit procedures natin dito? Tandaan, ang kailangan natin gawin, tignan natin if ever, tama yung use ng assumption na going concern. Pangalawa, tignan natin kung may material uncertainties. And kung yung material uncertainties na yun ay adequately disclosed. Pangatlo, kung hindi siya adequately disclosed, ang gagawin mo ay mag-modify ka ng iyong audit report. Now, if ever hindi siya going concern at balak niya or may plano siya to mitigate that, then tignan natin if ever the plan is feasible. I hope you already know that management responsibility are the different representations by the management. And based on these representations, it creates responsibility to the auditor. 
and take note that your audit procedures must always be in line to the responsibility of the auditors. So the audit procedures must be responsive to the different items of the responsibility of the auditor. Now, having known the responsibility of the auditor, let's look into the audit procedures. So the following are the audit procedures relating to the audit responsibility. So the first audit procedure is analytical procedure. We determine based on our analysis or whatever computations it, that is, or if ever we try to project that the company can still continue to maintain its going concern status. So let's say, for example, titignan mo yung budget niya and titignan mo kung whether makakarish siya ng enough financing to continue to pay off their liabilities, etc. Next, you look into subsequent events. What if there is now a law which now makes the business illegal? Therefore, the business should stop. So you look whether uh, there are any events that could trigger the uh, the ending of the business or the possible presentation of the FS of the business using a liquidating concern or under liquidation concern. Next, you review the compliance with debt and loan agreements. Katulad nga ng sabi ko kanina, paano kung sobrang dami niyang utang tapos based on your analysis, hindi niya pala kayang bayaran yung utang na yon, mababankrupt siya, therefore hindi na siya going concern, liquidating concern na yon. Another, you look into the minutes of the meetings. Why? Because perhaps on the minutes of the meetings, sinabi doon, uy, i-close na natin yung business. Uy, um, palugi tayo. Uy, kulang yung pambayad natin ng mga utang natin. So, possibly, uy, hindi na pala going concern. So, anong gagawin natin? Liquidating concern dapat siya. Next, you inquire to the legal counsel. Baka i-close lang business or there's any possibility that the business might not continue in a going concern basis. Lastly, confirmation with related third parties of arrangement for financial support. Because if there are already arrangement for financial support, it means that the entity cannot already sustain its own operation. If the entity cannot sustain its own operation, it means, therefore, guys, that perhaps the entity cannot continue into going concern. So once na, na tapos mo na yung audit procedures na yan and tining, tinignan mo kung reasonable naman siya or hindi or nasabi naman yung mga material na na possible transactions, then no problem. Okay, ulitin natin. Ano ang kanyang auditor's responsibility? Whether appropriate ang going concern assumption niya. Next, whether yung material transactions or uncertainties are disclosed. Next, if ever may plans, may plans, then again, it should be feasible. So, tong mga to, makikita natin using that audit procedures. So, analytical procedures, subsequent events review, review of compliance, minutes of the meeting, inquiry, and confirmation. E paano naman yung plans? Ano ang ating audit procedure dyan? So, additional audit procedure, if ever, the management plans to mitigate the effects of uncertainty of going concern. So, ano ulito? May going concern siya nung una, pero na-test mo na baka hindi siya mag-continue as to its going concern. Pero dito, may plan ang management so that at least using that plan, hindi siya mag-liquidate but will continue its operation. So what are the audit procedures to mitigate the effects of the going concern or to test the plan of the management to mitigate the effects of going concern? First, of course, you review the management plan. Next, you gather sufficient appropriate evidence. Next, you seek written up, uh, representations from management regarding its plan for future actions. So if ever uh, the, the entity or the management plans to uh, implement means to maintain their uh, going concern, then you should also test that. But generally, what you test, the appropriateness of the going concern assumption, 
Secondly, whether the material uncertainties are disclosed. Now, ang problema din natin dito is whether the going concern assumption is appropriate or inappropriate. Next, whether the material uncertainties are disclosed. Sa dalawa lang ang problema mo dito, tama? Appropriate ba siya or inappropriate? And whether material uncertainties are disclosed. So, let's look at it if ever hindi siya appropriate. First, if ever it is inappropriate, adverse ang ating opinion. Okay. So first, we determine our going concern, right? If ever it is appropriate or inappropriate. If ever it is inappropriate, sinabi niyang going concern siya. Sir, paano yung inappropriate? Sinabi niya mismo dun sa kanyang disclosure na undergoing concern siya. Di ba required na i-disclose ang going concern? Pero, nung tinas mo, ay hindi pala siya going concern. So, ano din ang gagamitin mo or anong audit report mo? Ang audit report mo ay adverse opinion. Next, what if it is appropriate? What is what if it is appropriate? And there's no material uncertainty. Then, there's no problem. There's no problem. But what if it is appropriate with material uncertainty? Tama? Dalawa kasi lang tinitignan natin eh. Appropriateness and the material uncertainty. If ever it is appropriate, no problem na kung wala siyang material uncertainty. Pero what if it is appropriate pero may material uncertainty? Ano na uli yung titignan natin sa material uncertainty? Whether disclose or not disclose. So what if the material uncertainty is disclosed? If material uncertainty is disclosed, in short, appropriate na going concern pero may material uncertainty, it is unqualified pa din, but there is emphasis of a matter paragraph. It is unqualified but add emphasis of a matter paragraph. But what if, with material uncertainty and you did not disclose, then your report will now be qualified or adverse. Qualified or adverse. Okay, ulitin natin. Ulitin natin yan para mas maintindihan natin. Ang management responsibility ay to appropriately determine the going concern assumption. Secondly, to disclose material uncertainties. So therefore, ang first test mo, whether appropriate or inappropriate. So pag inappropriate agad, adverse. E paano kung appropriate? Titignan mo kung may material uncertainty or no material uncertainty. Kung may material uncertainty, then you only disclose or not disclose. Tama? So kung dinisclose niya, no problem. Ang gagawin mo lang, unqualified, but you add an emphasis of a matter paragraph. But what if there is a material uncertainty and it is not disclosed? Then, you will now modify your opinion by giving a qualified opinion or adverse opinion. Pero, what if gumawa ka ng audit procedures but at the same time, hindi willing na magpa-assess si management? Kung hindi willing magpa-assess si management, then that is a scope limitation, qualified or disclaimer of opinion. Okay? So, gagawa tayo ng audit procedures based on the appropriateness of going concern assumption at the same time as to the disclosure of the material uncertainties. Kung nagawa mo lahat, wala namang problema, and then ang itetest mo is whether it is appropriate or na-disclose. So, titignan mo lang if ever kailangan mong i-modify yung audit report mo. Pero kung hindi ka nakagawa ng procedures kasi unwilling naman magpa-assess si management or si entity, then it is considered a scope limitation, you will now qualify or disclaim an opinion. That is for going concern. Next for our disclosure is subsequent events. So we're done with the related parties. We're done with going concern. Now we're into subsequent events.
So what is the management responsibility for subsequent events? So the responsibility only are subsequent events that affect the financial statements are properly accounted for and disclosed in the financial statement. So subsequent event must be uh, accounted and disclosed. So that is the responsibility. Therefore, what is the auditor's responsibility pertaining to this representation that we can properly identify subsequent events and then we evaluate the effect of the subsequent events? How do we evaluate the subsequent events? If ever they are accounted or adequately disclosed on the FS and on the auditor's report. Okay. So first, titignan natin if ever there is a subsequent event that will affect the financial statement. So the question here is, what, subsequent e what is a subsequent event? So subsequent event is any event that occurs between the end of the reporting period up to the time of the audit report date. Audit report date. So the events that are happening in between the end of reporting period and audit report date is considered subsequent events. Please do not confuse the subsequent event definition under the PSA and under the PFRSS. So in between those dates, if there is a subsequent event, then you need to account or disclose. Now, what do we need to determine here? We determine the type of subsequent event, whether the subsequent event is considered adjusting or non-adjusting. Generally, if non-adjusting, it is only disclosed. It is only disclosed. So what are adjusting events again? These events provide evidence of conditions that are already existing here, pero na-confirm lang subsequently. Existing na dito, na-confirm lang subsequently. Ang tawag natin dyan ay adjusting. Paano kung naman non-adjusting? You only need a disclosure. These are only events that are indicative of conditions that really arise only after the balance sheet date. So, andito lang talaga siya. O, ulitin natin. Adjusting, nangyari siya subsequent, pero andito na siya dati at the end of reporting period. So, for example, meron ka ng litigation doon at the end of reporting period. Nakalagay na doon yung possible liability mo. And then, there is now a subsequent event after the reporting period which now confirm the amounts of that particular liability. So, that is considered adjusting. Paano kung nagkaroon lang ng uh, loss at the uh, date after the reporting period but before the audit report? Existing na ba yung loss na yon during the end of reporting period? No. Therefore, it is considered non-adjusting. Therefore, pag nakakita kayo ng loss of uh, property, plant, and equipment due to whatever forces, that is considered non-adjusting. Loss of inventory due to fire, non-adjusting. Uh, uncollectible receivable due to losses. Uh, uh, non-adjusting purchase, non-adjusting. Okay, so if ever it is not yet present at the end of reporting period, it is considered non-adjusting. And once you determine whether it is adjusting or non-adjusting, adjusting must be properly accounted and disclosed, while non-adjusting must be disclosed. Adjusting must be properly accounted and disclosed, non-adjusting must be disclosed. So what if you already determined whether it is adjusting and non-adjusting. So what is the responsibility of the auditor? Your responsibility is to identify further subsequent events. Baka meron pang hindi na re record si entity na subsequent events. Hindi niya pa na-disclose, hindi niya pa na-account and disclose. Another one, whether yung na-record niya nga ay properly accounted and disclosed. So what is your audit procedure here? Your audit procedure is, of course, first, to review management or procedures of management to ensure the subsequent events are identified. 
Kasi kailangan na nga natin malaman kung tamang nakaka-record siya ng subsequent events. Kasi sabi natin, one of our responsibility is to perform audit procedures regarding identification of subsequent events. So, whether they can really identify. Next, you inquire. You inquire to management as to whether there has been any subsequent event. There has been any subsequent event which occurred that would affect the FS. Subsequent effect, a subsequent event that would affect the FS. Also, you try to inquire to legal counsel for possible litigation or claims. And if ever, those are already existing at the time of the at the time of the financial statement so that it requires adjustment. So, ang lagi mong tatandaan dito, kailangan mo lang munang i-identify kung may adjusting event or adjusting event because of a subsequent event. Kung hindi siya adjusting, eh di dapat, baka possibly, pwede siyang i-disclose. Because normally, some non-adjusting events are to be disclosed. And tignan mo kung tama yung pagka pagkaka account and disclose nun. Next, you read the minutes of the meetings, the shareholders, those charged with governance, audit and executive committees, including those held after period end and inquiring about matters discussed at meetings for which minutes are not yet available. Why? Because, again, we need to determine if ever yung meetings natin after the end of reporting period would uh, be an adjusting event or not. Next, you look into the entity's interim financial statement, budgets, cash flow forecasts, and management reports. You compare them with the financial statements under audit. Why? Kasi baka, dun sa interim na yon may nakapresent na ganito. Pero walang napresent before sa ating year-end financial statement. So baka, uh, adjusting yan. Or, yung amount before ng ating, halimbawa, na yung amount before ng ating liability ay 900 on a possible litigation. And then suddenly, on the interim, it is already 600 k So, possibly, nagkaroon na naman ng subsequent event. So, determine if ever it happened in between the date of the year end or the financial statement at the same time, the date of the audit report. And determine whether adjusting or non-adjusting. Next, we obtain representation letter from management regarding whether any events occurred during the subsequent period require adjustments to or disclosure in the financial statements. Again, this talks about those items that is already identified by the management. But if not, then you should be the one to determine or the auditor should try to determine or inquire whether the determination of the management should suffice or not. So once you finish reviewing subsequent events, then uh, there's no problem anymore. There's no problem anymore. So question, what if it is properly accounted or disclosed? Then no problem. So what if not properly accounted or disclosed? Lagi naman yan, di ba? Pag not properly accounted or disclosed, anong pwede mong gawin? It's either qualified or adverse. Paano kung hindi ka binigyan ng way to properly audit it? You cannot properly audit it. Then, it is considered a scope limitation. And if that is scope limitation, qualified or disclaimer. Lagi nyo lang tong tandaan, halos lahat sa completing uh, completion of the audit or completing the audit, yun yung titignan nyo kung nag-account ba siya or nag-disclose or kung hindi niya in-account or dinislose or may scope limitation. Pare-pareho yung effect niya noon normally. Mapapansin nyo yun. So, I hope makita nyo yung pattern na yun para mas madali sa inyong sagutan. What if the entity did not properly disclose the subsequent event? What should you do on your audit report? So, dapat alam na ninyo ngayon whether to uh, provide unqualified, qualified na possibly adverse then or disclaim an opinion. So, that's for review of subsequent events. Next, and the last item, analytical procedures. Analytical procedures. So, under analytical procedures, you all learned before that analytical procedures is required under planning. So, this is required under planning and at the same time, it is required in your 
overall review. And take note, under overall review, analytical procedure is part of your completing the audit. Completing the audit. So generally, ano bang ginagawa natin pag analytical procedures? Sa analytical procedures, we try to analyze, we try to project, look into ratios, look into trends, and determine and investigate those relationships. So, mag-pro-project tayo, mag-co-compute tayo, mag-analyze tayo, titignan natin lahat yon. And if ever there are changes, tignan natin if ever may relationship siya and inconsistent siya sa ating or dun sa represent representation ni management. So, what is the purpose then of uh, analytical procedures in your overall review stage? Take note, ah, purpose sa overall review lang to. Meaning, in the completion of the audit. That is to ensure the auditor's overall conclusion as to whether the financial statements as a whole are consistent with the auditor's understanding of the entity. So, ano yung gagawin natin? Meron tayong analytical procedures. Ano mga, anong meron sa analytical procedures na yan? May mga projections tayo. May ratios tayo. May trends tayo. And base dito, makaka-create tayo ng relationships. And based on these relationships, magkakaroon tayo ng expectation kung ano ang lalabas dapat sa financial statement ng ating client or ng management. So, what is the effect if ever it is different or inconsistent? Take note, ah, kailangan it creates an expectation based on the relationships. So, in short, para tayong nagkakaroon ng conclusion. Nagkakaroon ng conclusion. So, kung may analytical procedures, you try to uh, relate it to the conclusion. So, the analytical procedure should corroborate, corroborate the conclusion. Aside from that, it could identify your RMM or your risk of material misstatements, either unrecognized due to fraud or due to error. So generally, ah, analytical procedure, it can help us to create an expectation or conclusion. And this analytical procedure can corroborate our actual conclusion. So my actual conclusion, which is based on our audit report. Pero paano kung different or inconsistent siya? If ever it is different or inconsistent, the following are our audit procedures. So what are the audit procedures in your analytical procedure? First, inquire as to management and obtain appropriate audit evidence relevant to the management responses. So may sinabi siya sa inyo. Sinabi niya, uh, different siya kasi ganito, um, uh, bumili kami ng ng additional PPE kaya ganyan kataas ngayon yung PPE kasi inaassume mo na yung PPE ngayon kung magde-depreciate lang siya ganito lang yung value niya pero suddenly sobrang taas yung PPE niya so sabi niya ngayon sa iyo tumaas yan kasi nga bumili kami ng bagong PPE so if ever that is the response of the management you ask for an audit evidence that really there was a purchase of PPE that's why the balance of the PPE is too high Another one, you try to perform other audit procedures as necessary in the circumstances. So any, ad any other audit procedures, this is quite problematic in your analytical procedures. Why? Because actually it is based on judgment, unlike in your other substantive tests. Because in your substantive test, sometimes it guides you what to do. What are the audit procedures? But as I told you earlier, as I told you earlier, when we talk about completing the audit, it is really based on your uh, subjective judgments. Therefore, since it is subjective, normally who does this are the audit managers or the senior members because they already have extensive experience. And since they have extensive experience, they already know what to properly expect, how to properly uh, audit, or what are the proper procedures in case there are inconsistencies or differences from the expectation to the actual conclusion. So that's it for our completing the audit.